welcome to the club, but get ready to work. They made him pull out his wallet, take out his ID. He said, no, put it up like this and spin it around like a helicopter. <laughs> it's an interrogation meeting. I couldn't believe it, man. I was, I'm glad I was in there for that one, though. Welcome to the Million Dollar Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Chouquet, and today we've got Rolando Rosas back on the show for a second time. He's with Global Tech Worldwide. Ro, it's good to have you back on, man. How you been? I'm doing great, Nick. How are you? Good to see you yeah, again. Yeah, man. It's definitely good to chat. I'm, I'm doing good. Life has been amazing, busy, but I'm, I'm really enjoying everything I've got going on. Oh, well, you know, uh, as an Amazon seller or an online seller, uh, I don't think you have a dull day, right? You know, stuff, stuff, and that's being kind, right? Instead of using shit, yep. stuff happens. Uh, and it's unavoidable, right? If you want to be, uh, selling and run a business on Amazon, I'm sure you could agree with that. Yeah. It's, it's always hectic, always, always something popping up, something new to kind of figure out, which certainly keeps it interesting. And, and personally, I kind of like dealing with those things, right? Like it's, it's an, <laughs> it's a tough dichotomy, I think, right? Because the more I have planned, the less I, I want to deal with stuff that pops up. But if I'm kind of left to my own, you know, natural operating uh, procedure, I, I really thrive on those, those problems that kind of come up out of nowhere. And it's like, all right, come on, we got to go. Time to fix it. <laughs> you know, as the boss of a, of a business that sells on Amazon, you're the, the head of the fire department. Yeah. There's fires that are going on all the, some bigger, some smaller. And, you know, I was talking to Chad Rubin a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he, he sold his last venture and is on to something else now. And he said to me, you know, I really enjoy not having to put out fires every day. Yeah. And that was the best part about selling his company. Uh, he still has an Amazon presence uh, selling, you know, uh, I think air filters, uh, but the the grind that comes with you know having multiple companies in his case that were on Amazon is it's a lot of work and you know what Nick I think that's a good place to start people that want to be on Amazon it is a pet peeve of mine that I see every single freaking day how people are let's call them influencers on line right not, not anybody in particular but influencers settling and selling and peddling either a course or an ebook or some, they're, one they're not really sellers two the advice is poor and three a lot of them are saying you can get into it and it's just passive income like you have no care in the world no fires and you're really going to put in minimal hours to get this thing going like <laughs> that is the worst advice possible if anybody's doing that and trying to sell you something run away that's what i say yeah 100 percent, man like there it, it's a great business to get into there's a lot of opportunity and and you know you can certainly work from anywhere but man i mean you're you're working you know you you're working around the clock we got vas in the philippines they come in at 7 right. 7 p.m my no time they're shooting me messages i'm I'm getting sucked back in, right? Like it, it, it's a whole. It becomes a force of its own, um, and I, th it, I think it the, is. the golden days of of kind of getting lucky on Amazon are are gone, man. It's it's not there anymore. <laughs> well, the times have changed. You know, uh, uh, Amazon has evolved, uh, and if you think of Amazon as a somewhat of a living, breathing organism. It was an amoeba 20 years ago. Now it's somewhere, you know, maybe some kind of species that's further along. Yeah. Right? So it is not going to be the same 10 weeks from now as it was 10 years from uh, a that have passed. And so I think like what you said, the easy days, they've also learned, you know, there's people doing all kinds of black hats and they've you know, recently sending people to jail. The FTC is rounding people up for things that, probably were okay five or ten you could pay people for reviews you can't do that right you could manipulate reviews you can't do that and for those folks that think you could do that today ouch you can't right or you could but 
you're going to yeah. find that uh, you're going to be at the wrong end of the stick soon. Yeah, and I think one one thing I've learned, not I was never like super black hat. I mean, I'll certainly blur the lines a little bit and um and and kind of a uh, rules are meant to be broken type of guy, right? But um there's a certain line I won't cross cuz at some point you're better off just putting the energy into like doing a really good job at at marketing your product or <laughs> Uh, creating a really good product, right? Like it's just a, it, it's a better play. Right. And no, and, and not only that, I heard this from one of our MDS members. I just rather sleep at night a little bit better, yes. right? Not having to worry about like, Ooh, when is this party going to end? Or if I get caught doing something like that in the, in the long, if you're in this for the long run, right? You're in this as a part of your business and you want to sleep better at night it may seem like you're getting left behind or left out of the party, right? But eventually a lot of the, the, the more egregious black hat techniques, they either get cut off now much more quickly than before, or your account is done. Yep. Right. They're not playing those games anymore on Amazon. They're like, you're out. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm not one of those guys that can, you know, spin up 10 accounts overnight and, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, some sir. Of those I don't do. have an art. Yeah, no, it's it it's it's just totally not worth it. You know, we we've been on the platform for over ten years, and you know this. You have days that are ups, that are down. They have rollouts that are good, rollouts that are horrible. Um, and I'm sure you you've probably heard of what's been happening to a lot of folks that have gone through like the Inform Act verification, yeah. and that was uh, the debacle. It was, I got to say, I've seen a lot of rollouts in my time. This is one of the poorly handled rollouts. Eh? There's no, no other way but to say that. And I've talked to folks inside of Amazon. They admit that this was not well executed, right? That's not putting anything, any bad spin on it. That's just the way yeah. it is. Yeah. I got lucky with that. I don't know. I thought I was going to have all these types of problems. I didn't have one problem. Um, Mm. Uh, you're one of lucky yeah, I got ones. lucky. You're one of lucky ones. I just ones. did what they uh, asked so, me to do, and I had to switch. The hardest part I had was to switch my, um, I had to switch my, um, what you, my address. You know, I had to get some some information changed because I had some old stuff on my bank account, so I just had to yep. update that, and that was it. I'll say, you know, on the Walmart side, it was two clicks, and it was over. Okay. And they verified instantly. Uh, so that was really seamless, very easy, very painless. Yes. Wow. On Walmart side. I On the Amazon side, I had to wait for something like I saved this just in case it's a <laughs> memento call, I did the address verification <laughs> card that came in the mail. Uh, that took that was actually quicker than the bank verification, although wow. we never changed the bank details. Okay. That, and that was really frustrating. But eventually it got turned on. But I want to say this, Nick, for anybody that's listening to this that has had an Amazon account in the UK and is not actively selling or sold very little, because we went through this ourselves recently, and I want to help out any seller that I can with what I'm about to tell you. The um, we found ourselves <clears throat> we found ourselves with our funds being withheld globally yes. across the board, and it had to do with that. The Amazon UK team, the payments team, they're trying to crack down on bad actors. I'm all for that. But they did not notify the US side of this effort because for weeks, nobody at Amazon US support knew of what was going on. I kept saying, hey, why, why is our disbursement being frozen? Why is all in, in the technical term is account level reserve? Okay. Why is all our money? And we never, never. Maybe there's like a hundred bucks there because somebody did a charge back or something like that. Nothing to get worried about. But why is all our money? For, and then nobody knew. And somehow some, somebody posted something like, you should check out your UK account. And I went and looked. Sure enough. And I asked, hey, what's going on? Why? Are, yep, we're holding all funds because you're not verified in the, U, in, in the UK. And it turns out that they didn't start that way. Back in March, when they were trying to get verification going, they said, hey, we're going to deactivate your UK account if you're not verified. And I will admit, I ignored those yeah. because we weren't selling for over a year in the UK. So, yeah, so what? Turn it off. Well, 
they went from that position to in May at the same time the Inform Act verification was happening. So that's why this caused a lot of confusion. At the same time, they rolled out this new stance. By the way, we just froze all your disbursements worldwide because you're not verified in the UK. So it's an after the fact notification. When they, if that was going to be the position, they should have said that back in March. Yeah. Hey, get in compliance, get verified. Otherwise, we're going to freeze all your accounts. I think a lot of sellers would have avoided the problems they're facing today had that come out. It just got sprung on. It. And I got to tell I went through every notification we got from the UK. Not one of them said anything about this new position about you know, freezing accounts worldwide. So if you are mysteriously not getting paid from the US side and you still have not found out why and Amazon US support has no clue, I'm telling you, Go look at your Amazon UK or Amazon Germany account or any of those EU accounts. Look at the performance notifications. Go through the verification process, which is a mess, by the way, worse than US. Um, and start pushing the information in to get verified because it's going to take a while. Nice. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. And I know you had also talked about uh, a member in the group helping you out a little bit with that situation. Mm. And I want to I want to get to that in a few minutes, but I think this also right. mentioned this also touches on what you mentioned earlier with the drop shipping thing, right? And uh, yeah. because let's say you are one of these people who's thinking about, you know, putting in fifteen thousand dollars to this drop ship automation business, they start you up an Amazon account. Um, yes, yeah, so like this would be a great question to ask those guys when you're on the phone. You know, how are you guys dealing with the Informed Consumer Act? You know, how do you guys deal with this process going on in the UK? Chances are they don't even know about it, right? Because they're not real sellers. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. And, and you know, there's so many people right now that want to start a side hustle. Yeah. And that's commendable. Yeah. That's honorable. You should if you can. So I think there's probably but a few other no... things. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ro. Oh, no. I was going to say... You got to know what you're getting into with Amazon. And, I, you know, I'll, let me just tell you a little bit why I feel so strongly about talking about this today, because I remember back in 2000 when, uh, 2001, when my company, no, oh, let, me, let me check myself, 2002. Now it's become clear. <laughs> it's getting further and further away. It becomes a little foggy. So 2002, I was laid off. And the company... So just hand in your laptop, we're letting you go. And they had been laying people off because that was during the um, telecom bust okay. part of the economy, right? Boom. I kind of got into my own side hustle, which is what I've now turned from side hustle to a full-blown business. You have to know what you're getting into if you want to have an Amazon business. And if you want to be successful at it, I will tell you, and you know this, Nick, it is not a passive income situation. You must, if you want to make this successful, you want to get to that seven figure and eight figure that everybody likes throwing those numbers around. You want to get there. You cannot do it sitting remotely in a beach. I love the fact that I can work remote right now. I'm talking to you remote and you know, when we get done, I'm going to be talking to my team, but you will be working yeah. and you want to master the things that will take you to seven figures and beyond. And that cannot be in a passive mode. Right. You can't accomplish that on Amazon. I don't know. You know what, Nick? Tell me of one seller that has started off and and exited being completely passive on Amazon. Yeah, not one. I can't find yeah, one. Definitely not don't one. know one. No one. It doesn't work. So if you're listening to this and somebody told you and you paid five thousand dollars or more for a course, ouch. Yeah. Because you're gonna need to do a lot of heavy lifting, especially early on, Nick. It's a a steep learning curve. Definitely, definitely. And and guess what? Here's the here's the other thing that I, the other day, you know that Amazon. If you go on Instagram or have an Instagram account, Amazon is running ads on Instagram and other platforms as well, day and night, to sell on Amazon. Yep. So you know you have folks on one end that say, hey, you could do this, you know, easily passive income, go to Alibaba, buy something for 20 cents, right? Sell it on Amazon. You'll be on page one, baloney. And then on the other end, you have Amazon actively recruiting new 
uh, sellers every single day joining the platform. So if between the both of them, a misconception on one side with the passive side and Amazon actively recruiting, you have new, fresh recruits coming in all the time into the platform. And I want to just say, if you're in that position, welcome to the club, but get ready to yeah. work. 100%. I was trying to find this. Uh, I got hit by an ad the other day. It was it was the tight it was the Titan <laughs> Network. It was like a it was like a three step checklist to get to page one. Mm. Oh my! I don't think I'm gonna. They put you through the funnel. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to find it. But yeah, you know, it's 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 not easy. It's it's a great opportunity. Right. Like you can you can make good money. Uh, you can certainly build a team and, and delegate tasks and mm-hmm. maybe things get a little easier for you and and you can stay focused on the things you enjoy doing and, and what you're best at. But, man, I mean, I'm, you know, like seven years in and I feel like I'm kind of just getting to that point. Right. Where we're like Hell rapidly yeah. hiring and we have a team of people underneath. Uh, but then there's always going to be those things that I, I love to do, right? Like there's a reason why I got into this business. Um, and part of it is just cause I love, I love certain aspects of it and whether I have nothing to do or a lot to do, uh, my mind gravitates towards those, those things. Um, so I'm fortunate in that sense that, you know, I got myself into a situation where there's, there's really an outlet for me to express my true self, uh, through my business, uh, which is great. Yeah. And, and, you know, for a lot of people, uh, that are looking for that next thing, that next evolution in their career or the next, uh, chapter in their lives, Amazon can serve and fill that, that, that thing, like what you're saying. And I, I think the thing that doesn't get a lot of amplified from a voice, uh, side of thing is how you really need to jump in. You need to be all in to really make this go. Yeah. Like you're saying, you, you need a team. You could start out by yourself um, and take those steps slowly, right? You know, to understand the platform because it is not like Shopify. Right. It's not like, you know, selling on Google. It's not like selling on eBay. And that happened to us. You know, the first year, I think we sold $7,000. We were already selling a whole lot on our own big commerce store. Um, this is before Shopify, right? So to us, Amazon was kind of like, ah, that's a joke. Nobody's buying this, these electronic products on, on Amazon, certainly not businesses. And we were wrong because we were looking at it like we look at it from our, from our big commerce store. And once a year went by and we're like, to say, eh, let's, what's so different about it? what make, well, there's a lot of nuance. There's a lot that goes into, and I would say, I don't know, Nick, do you agree that it's become more, the word I would use is sophisticated. Yeah, you know, I would. It was simpler. It would, And it's become more sophisticated. And to really take a business on Amazon to that next level, you have to adjust to the sophistication now with the data, with the ads, with the images, with the listings, and all the other aspects, with the team building that comes with getting to that next level on yeah. Amazon. Man, I, I remember when I started my Amazon account, like, all I did was create like a username and password. Right? <laughs> like that, that was it. You know, 15 minutes later, all right, I'm an Amazon seller. Now it's like, yeah. uh, you gotta, I saw this guy. I was, um, I was a friend of mine hit me up like a year ago. He's out in Norfolk, Virginia. It's about 20 minutes from me. Uh, he had an office okay. space. Uh, he wanted to know if I wanted an office space in exchange to help him out a bit on Amazon. I said, yeah, All sure, right. I'll, you know, we'll, we'll give it a shot. But man, he had to verify his account. And uh, I was sitting on the phone call with him with the face-to-face verification. They made him pull oh, out they, his he wallet. Did a ver- he did a video verification. They made him pull out his wallet, take out his ID. I'm like, all right, he's going to show him his ID. Then he made him, he said, no, put it up like this and spin it around like a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way did he just tell you it's to an spin interrogation it around meeting. like a helicopter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I saw that somewhere. Um, one of the, the legal folks we use, um, his name is CJ, and he said, he said, you know, if you're going through the video verification process, be prepared for an interrogation because yeah. that's what they're doing now. So you and I didn't have to, you just, we submitted stuff and, you know, here's our bank accounts and, you know, checked it off. Done. Yep. 
today, be prepared for interrogation. Like they will ask you, who are your suppliers? Where do you get this? Show us invoices. Like you, that's a new one to yeah. me. Show me the wallet and spin it around in <laughs> helicopter style. I couldn't believe it, man. I was. I'm glad I was in there for that one. Now I'll never forget that. Oh my god, you had to be there to to hear. Yes. But I'm glad you mentioned. I that wouldn't because, have believed it, right? Uh, if someone would have told no, me that, I would have been like, "Hell no, man, about? get out of here." You're like, "You're lying." <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 ridiculous. There's no way that that could happen. Uh, but yeah, the, it's Amazon has evolved. It used to be, let's say, let's say it, again, it was an amoeba many years ago. Now it's some intelligent life form. I don't know, maybe a chimp, an ape, you know, a fish. Yep. I don't know, somewhere in the somewhere in the middle in there. And it keeps evolving. You know, they, the fact that there's been a lot of um, uh, folks that have been bad actors on the platform. Right. The incentives for a long time were were really skewed in one way led to this situation you know if we didn't have bad actors you wouldn't need you know spin your wallet and take <laughs> the idea out right that would be completely unnecessary but given that there's so the platform has become so big there's hundreds of millions of prime uh, accounts both personal and business uh, buyers on the platform it's a way to make real dollars mm -hmm. right and to get to the level where you're making seven figures, or what, I, I saw something from Marketplace Pulse uh, recently, and it broke down uh, the, the the types of sellers on the platform. You know, only one percent or less are making seven figures and above. Yep. So let's just call that a million dollars, right? There are very few sellers out of the. It's estimated somewhere between three and five million. Only one percent gets there. So getting there is Hard. If it were not hard, you'd say 50% of the sellers would be making seven figures and above, right? right? It is not easy. So be prepared to learn. The faster you learn, the faster you can build the team, the faster you have a good team that works with you, that understands the platform, the faster that can accelerate. Obviously, there are way more tools than there were when we started off. Yep. So that learning curve can be maybe not as steep as back in the day when you and I went on the platform, but you got to be ready to put all those pieces in place. You know, I, I've talked to really big brands. I talked to a um, cosmetic brand that runs commercials online uh, and on, on TV. They had three people dedicated to the Amazon team, okay. two internal and a lawyer. I said, you can't, and at the, you know, they're multi-billion dollar company. I said, you're going to, and they had problems. I said, you're going to need to add resources at this level. You got to add a team more than just two people yeah. because you're going to get tons of hijackers because they're a big mega brand. You, you, that's what one of the things they were facing with hijackers uh, and people copying their listings and other issues. Again, you, you, you are the chief of police or uh, the chief fire department, you're the chief of the fire department. And in the case of Amazon, you need to have a chief of the fire department that's going to put out fires because they come every single day, some more than others. But again, you, you got to build a team. You want to build a team, start off yourself, learn the platform and add those pieces. Like, you know, um, I like being involved in the sales and the design team. Yeah. I like being, that's the thing I get the most out of. Uh, accounting, not as much. So we have a, a, a an outsourced company that handles that for us. You know, wherever you can, you know, give pieces off to a, a, a good team or an outsourced agency that can handle some of that for you. And you're staying in, if you love design, be in the design part of it. If you like sales, be involved in sales and marketing. Find those pieces that really do it for you, right? And that's what's going to allow you to, you know, be there multiple years and grow it to seven figures and beyond. Yeah. And I think that's one of the great things about, about the business that it offers is, you know, you have that opportunity to, to focus on something that, that you really want to. Um, and I think one of the other cool things I learned from Amazon in my early days falls back on, you know, kind of the, the comparison of like a job to entrepreneurship or Amazon business in general is if you put more into it, you should want to work hard on it, right? Because you're going to get a return mm -hmm. pretty quickly, especially if you're doing mm -hmm. something like drop shipping 
or retail arbitrage reselling it is. right like it, it if is. it's if it's a private no label it takes a little longer to get things going but man reselling yep. you buy it send it in sell it get your money repeat and that's it right we didn't run ads it, 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 we didn't design products uh we didn't do any of that when i started it, it, um you know now we it, do it, all of those things but um, yeah, you should really want to work hard on, on your business because the great thing about being an entrepreneur is you're, you're not waiting for, for a meeting at the end of the year to see if you get a 3% raise, you know, you just make more money, um, you know, right, right away from your efforts. So it's very rewarding in, in that sense was just adds fuel to that, that motivation, uh, to keep you going. No doubt. And when you see the check from Amazon come in yeah. when they pay you. You're like, wow, that's nice. Yep. <laughs> that's nice. And then you're like, can I, you know, you know, go to a thousand dollars a day in sale? And you know, you work and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. We reached that mark. And then you're like, can we get to 10? Oh, 10. Yes. Uh, what about 15? Yeah. 30. Oh yeah. Yep. And then you have some days that pop up even higher than that. And, and it's directly, you know, tied to what you're doing on the platform. You don't have that capability when you work for somebody. Right. You know, I, I worked for two large companies prior to doing this and wow, you can't go in and say, boss, can I get a 30% raise right. this year? That's probably not going to happen. Especially working for large companies, they get five, six, 7% raises. That's the norm. Uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40% increase, 50%. It's just... So yeah, um, wanted to, to just jump back on the drop shipping aspect yeah. and reselling. So that's how we started. We started as a reseller and still to this day we resell. And a lot of people, it blows their mind when I say, yeah, we've been reselling electronics for 20 years because it's ultra competitive, uh, just like some of the, you know, supplements and health, those are, you know, very competitive categories. And one of the reasons was uh, that I could think of well, how we've been able to do this for over 20 years of reselling now on, on Amazon is that the bigger brands, and I would imagine it's probably for other categories as well, they look at Amazon very differently than you and I. You and I are hungry, we're motivated, we're scrappy. Like you said, we put a, we're all in, we're invested. That hustle, that tenacity, that attention to detail is something the bigger brands just throw money at and they get, get have an agency to just here's here's half a million dollars run that for us yeah they don't have the same incentive uh, an agency does not as you know a scrappy starting uh entrepreneur that's just hustling for every dollar right and that hustle for every dollar is then what leads it you know to grow from a dollar to 10 to 100 to thousands and tens of thousands and over seven figures and I think that's why a lot of uh, the aggregators stepped into this space because so they thought, you know what? These are some good sellers that are making money, but we know more. We got the smart people behind us. What if we turn that into, you know, from a seven figure business to eight figures? And they found out that you need, as part of the equation, you can't get, get rid of the founder or the, or the heart of the heart and soul of a company that's selling on Amazon and replace it with a bunch of people looking at spreadsheets. Right. And I think they found that out the hard way. There's some really good brands you could probably put on autopilot, but for the majority of them to continue growing, you need that scrappy mentality. Like, you know, every day is a new day and, you know, we're clawing and scratching and that's what keeps, um, you know, uh, the, I would say the difference between a lot of entrepreneurs on Amazon and then the rest of them. Yeah, and I, I I imagine like something so simple uh, to to show an example of like what you're talking about, and I'm sure you've experienced this row where you you encounter a problem on Amazon, you open a case, seller support tells you something, <laughs> right? Like now, uh, how many people are just going to <laughs> they're just going to be like, oh, you know, seller support said we can't do that, right? And they just take it. Whereas me, I'll be like, like no, like I'm not gonna accept no, uh, that, no. right? No, like, open up another case, yeah. or opening yeah, cases. Yeah, open up another one. Yeah, and if you can't you, do you that, can't. you're not gonna make it on Amazon. <laughs> Here's a pro tip, my friend, for anybody that is listening to this. Um, we hired somebody to just that, that. I have a person on my team. All she does, she handles all the tickets. 
and she follows it up. And we recently, uh, I, we started using ClickUp. Okay. So big props to ClickUp. It makes that whole task, and then we, we use it for many other things, but just this one specific task of support, support tickets, follow-up, um, things like hijackers, she is on it because if you have somebody like that on your team, it makes the frustrations go from here on some days down to here. Right. I'm on it. I got it taken care of. That hijacker is gone. Uh, I filed the ticket with support. Now I'm going to go to brand registry. Nope, I'm on it. Uh, brand registry said go over here. I'm on it, right? You got to you know, make that whole part of, uh, of the equation, which is part of life being on Amazon. You got to have somebody on it. Otherwise, you know, tickets don't get responded. They'll close. The most frustrating thing is, you know, they'll see and you'll look at your, um, the case status and it says answered. And they're like, yeah. well, that wasn't answered. <laughs> and they want you to give a feedback survey on the quality of service. Like, no, sorry. And so you got to open tickets. I heard this from Stephen Pope. He said, just keep opening tickets yeah. until they, somebody tells you some bogus response, open another one. Um, the other one, by the way, um, you can reach the Costa Rica call center on weekends. Now, Ooh, I didn't know about the weekend. Something I just, um, okay. Yep, weekends. You'll reach, now why do I say this? Because if you're going to open up tickets, you want folks that are interested in trying to resolve it. We've found that folks that they have in Costa Rica tend to do that. You know what they did? I think they heard it on a lot of podcasts. They shut off the, so you can talk to agents in English, um, ranch and Mandarin, all these options. They took the Spanish one off wow. of there. Wow. Okay. Because they're like, that can't, too many calls were, had to be going in. Yeah. They had to be backlogged with a lot of cases. And so they took the Spanish option is, but here's the tip do it on the weekends. There's a high probability you're going to get somebody in the Costa Rica call center that speak English. Okay. Ask them, ask them, listen to their name. If it sounds Spanish, it's going to be somebody in, the, in a call center in Costa Rica and say, hablas español. Very simple. Do you speak Spanish? They may be hesitant. And that happened to me the, the couple of times that I asked my uh, person that works on it. She said, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Hablo español. And I was like, tricky freaking Amazon. Yeah. They don't want us to know that that call center is still there and you can reach them. But if you ask them, Hey, are you in the, and they were really hesitant to tell you they're in the Costa Rica call center, but just, Hey, look, I'm, I'm just trying to find out, you know, who I'm dealing with. Who's on the other line? Where are you? Are you in the Philippines? Are you in India? Are you, Oh, I mean, okay. Nice. Or they don't want to tell you Costa Rica. Are you in Central America? Did they say yes. There's only one call center that I know of, and that's in the Costa Rica right. uh, call center. Right. So try to reach them. They help you much more than I find in the Indian uh, call centers or even the Filipinos, even though we, we work with Filipinos, Costa Ricans uh, tend to go out of their way to really try to handle the case so that it can have some resolution to it. So do that if you can. Yeah. And a lot of people won't understand the, the value of that you know, what you just shared there, right? Unless they've been through it, you know, like someone who hasn't <laughs> been on Amazon selling, you know, they're probably like, why the hell does that matter? You know, but <laughs> well, it, it matters, you know, Nick, we just had this, we were talking about members of NDS. Yep. And um, I had, I've spoken to a lot of calls, but this one I got involved with the worldwide um, dispersants being shut off. They were telling us in the US, your funds are coming. Don't worry about it. What? And three weeks into it, no funds were coming. How can, that's because they didn't know the information and they weren't looking beyond maybe what was on their screen or maybe they didn't have that information. So the value of talking to people that know what they're talking about and actually care, and they may dig a little deeper than going beyond what's in just the top of their screen. They're scrolling down. They may check, you know, in their internal wiki uh, and see what's going on. Are other seller cases with you kind of get that with the Costa Rica folks and you're like, oh yeah, there's some reports about this thing happening over here or over there. And now you have the information to understand. Let me give you another tip. When you send stuff to support, one of the things that we've found useful is when we submit, we submit video. It helps so much because you know, if you're doing like a test buy and you're just like, here's the product that came in, 
It's not the same one that's on the listing. The listing says it comes with 10 things and they only ship five. Here's what came in the box. A, there's no arguing with video. And B, video has the ability to be tracked. So if they click on it and look at it and somebody in Brooklyn, New York, or in Seattle or in Austin, where brand registry people or in Detroit, all of these offices may have something to do with brand registry and look at it, you know the case has gone beyond the India call center right. or the Manila call center or the Costa Rica call center. Now you know something can happen and somebody is empowered because these frontline folks, they have zero power yeah. to fix a problem, especially when we're talking about hijackers. Uh, they have zero power to do anything about it and they won't put you in touch with the internal team. They'll say, we're forwarded to our internal team. How many times have you heard that? Oh, yeah, that's we, the worst. We're, that's, yeah. we're communicating the, the with our internal team right on there. this. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. But with video, now you know when that somebody on that team in usually one of those cities has looked at the video and you know is working on the case so that if a day or two goes by, you can go back and say, hey, um, has your internal team looked at it? And you know, if it hasn't been touched at all, you know that to be true. Right. If they've already looked at it, you're like, hey, I know that your internal team has is reviewing this matter. Can you check in with them and find out what's going on? Whereas right now, most people, it's a black hole when they tell you the internal team is looking yeah. at it. It's just like if, 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 you know, you put it in a big box and you have no, what, no idea what's happening. Yeah, that's pretty smart. So are you guys using Loom for that? You can use Loom. The other one that is out there is Dub. Okay. Dub gives you a, a little bit more granular intelligence uh, when it comes to folks that have looked at the video. Um, and so I'm, I'm a big proponent of either because in, in both cases, you are going to get um, better help on the support side because they can see the thing that you're trying to say, you, whether it's a you know hijacking situation and a test buy or something else. Uh, on the dub, you get a little bit more details around some of that. Uh, so, you know, oh, it's in Brooklyn. You know, somebody opened it in, in Austin or whatever, Seattle. Um, you, I don't believe Loom, as of this recording, gives you that information. Right. Yeah. I think they just give you like the click, right? Someone someone watched yep. your video, I think is what they say. Yep. Um, yep. So, yeah, man, that that is a very good tip. Yeah. That's uh, one I'll probably start using myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it off air. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, well, man, Ro, it's uh, it's it's been really good having you on. I wish we had some more time to chat. Uh, you're you're definitely sharing some great things, and and it's been good to catch up since we had you on on the no, first I love time. It. I love and, hearing from you. Yeah, and for you know, for anyone who wants to learn more about Ro, you guys can go back to the to the first season. And today we make, in some days, one day as much as we made that first year, and that was like, whoa! If you're an entrepreneur, the road is bumpy. Every seller can tell you a horror story or. Yeah. Uh, Ro talked more about how he got into the business and uh, some of the stuff he dealt with along the way. And then you guys can get to know him a little more on a personal level. Um, but and yeah, man, thanks for coming on and, and just dropping some great info. I know we had some more things we wanted to talk about, so we'll we'll have to bring you on for, uh, for a third one, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you want me on, Nick, my, I'm open to you and, and love coming on here and sharing what I know. All right. Sounds good, man. We'll be on the lookout for the invite. We'll definitely get you back on. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. Appreciate that.